first time I smoked a pipe, I really enjoyed it. Um, it did bring back memories of my grandfather. And I think at first, my first choice of pipe tobacco wasn't that great. But also it was, it was the smell and the memories that kind of overrode <laughs> what I was, um, what I was smoking at the time. It, it, it was very relaxing, much like it is tonight, just a time to just sit back and relax. And that's what really drew me to it. I first got into pipe making, um, I had really gotten into woodworking. I was turning all kinds of boxes on lathes. I was building uh, custom knife boxes for knife collectors. I had smoked a pipe in the mid 90s for a while. And um, after my son was born, I kind of didn't smoke the pipe for, for quite a while. And when I started getting back into it, I'd been doing the woodworking and I was looking at pipe prices. And at the time, you know, some of the pipes can be on the expensive side, but also I just wanted the challenge of making a pipe. So my first pipe was a pre-drilled pipe. It already had the tobacco chamber drilled and the air hole drilled in the stem, um, but then it was just a block. So for me, it was just to shape a pipe around what's already drilled. And I was hooked as soon as I made that first one and loaded it up with tobacco. Um, I mean, the pipe looked like kind of muddled up silly putty with a stick in it. It wasn't pretty, but there was something so satisfying with that first pipe. And ever since, you know, I've been you know, learning new techniques and just getting better with time. I saw the ways to go is, you know, almost any pipe maker will say you're, you're continually learning. But that's also what's so fun when you have a pretty steep learning curve like that in it. You can always get better. You can always refine your skills and just that's why it is so fun for me. It is such a challenge. The process of making a pipe in, in, in its most simple form, it's a block of wood with a tobacco chamber and an air hole that goes to a stem of some, some sort. In my process, what I do is I first have the block of wood, I look at the grain and I try to see, okay, how can I maximize the grain uh, in this shape? I'll then sketch out on the block the rough design where the tobacco chamber is going to be where the air hole is going to be. And then when everything's together, you have the flowing lines, but you have to get that engineering right. And that's where the kind of the art comes in. around people that were making something or some kind of creative outlet like that in their free time. And it didn't really catch on with me until much later once I started settling down. And then it just, I just had to urge to start making something. And that's what I've been doing ever since. Actually, both sides of my family, um, they're woodworkers. My early childhood memories were carved bears and uh, different pieces around the house that, that they had made. And 
I always thought it, what was always interesting to me was just looking at something that they had made years ago. I didn't really care what they did for a living, how much money they had or anything. I was just fascinated that they made something, you know, something that's around for generations and generations to come. First memory of Pipe was, I don't even know how old I was, but it was of my grandpa and uh, he would, he was the one that would be handing out Christmas presents and he always had a billiard style pipe sticking out of his mouth and he'd be going around to the kids and handing out the Christmas presents and in that memory always stuck in the smell of, you know, Christmas dinner and things being made and the smell of pipe tobacco around his house was just, it always just smelled like home to me. Um, and so that's really what drew me to it. My favorite part is always the shaping. Um, shaping in the pipe, that's where you see the actual pipe start to emerge out of the block. It's definitely the most satisfying part. But it's the feeling when you really kind of connect with it and when the shape is coming together. With the French wheel, the whole time I can feel the pressure of the wheel pulling. You get more pressure, less pressure. You just know when you're when you're starting to, to nail a design. When I finish a pipe like this, this pipe now I probably have probably about eight hours and still have some more time into it. But it's like when you're buying a, a handcrafted pipe, I mean, really you're, this is one day of my life that's gone into making this that I've devoted to, you know, doing my best on making this pipe. So it's like when you're buying a, a handcrafted product, whether it's a pipe or, or some other um, craft that someone makes, I mean, you're buying, you know, you're getting, of course, their accumulated skill over the years to make it, but you're also buying some of the, some of their time and, you know, a little bit of their passion that goes into it. Um, it's not like just stamping something out or, or printing something. Um, every single part of this pipe, you know, has had my full concentration, whether it's, you know, the stem, um, doing the curves and the lines in the stem, um, when I bend the stem, the final coat, um, everything has my full attention and, and to me it's, it's worth spending a day on, uh, because when I'm done, I know I'm going to have a pipe that, you know, someone can smoke for years and years, pass it on to their kids. Um, and for me, that's worth it. It's, it's just a very satisfying feeling for me. Pipe smoking world. I mean, you have your factory pipes and you have your handmade pipes. Um, what draws people and what draws me to handcrafted pipes is each pipe has been made by a person. It's almost a piece of them. It's it's a piece of their time. It's.
them handcrafting um, all of their skills going into this pipe. It's a one of a kind. You, you won't find another one exactly like that. And I think that's what really draws people to the artisan, where so many of my customers, they bought three, four, five, six pipes from me, but they know me. And so they feel a connection to me through the pipe. And, and I, I think that's the big difference. The more things are mass produced, the more people want to connect to the craft or to the individual instead of something that's just produced in the thousands and thousands. And I think it's getting back to people being creative and creating things.